The UN-backed court in The Hague is summing up its case against four men accused of being involved in the assassination of the former Lebanese Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri in Beirut in 2005. The accused men tried in absentia are members of the powerful Lebanese group Hezbollah. It denies any involvement. A fifth man, a senior Hezbollah commander, was originally indicted before he was killed in Syria. The court has not delivered its verdict yet, but in summing up the judge uh, who, who has said there is no evidence that the leadership of the Hezbollah militant group was involved. Have a listen. The trial chamber is of the view that Syria and Hezbollah may have had motives to eliminate Mr Hariri and some of his political allies. However, there was no evidence that the Hezbollah leadership had any involvement in Mr Hariri's murder and there is no direct evidence of Syrian involvement in it the judge there. Well, our Middle East editor, Jeremy Bowen, has been following developments and has this report. It's still time for anger in Lebanon after the catastrophic explosion in Beirut docks. It's too soon to say whether they'll get the change, so many are demanding. Another shattering event 15 years ago produced as much shock and similar calls for reform. On the 14th of February 2005, a massive bomb blew up the motorcade of Rafiq al-Hariri, the former prime minister who was campaigning for re-election. It killed Hariri and 21 others. One of the first to reach him was Hariri's long-serving bodyguard, Mohamed Dia, who wants justice. To start with, I couldn't tell if it was him from his face. I was reeling. Some of the guys told me to check his face, his back, or his hair to see if it was him. But I could only tell it was him from his wedding ring. At the funeral, his supporters were already accusing Syria's President Assad of ordering the killing. A few months earlier, Assad had threatened him for questioning Syria's right to dominate Lebanon. During the 2000 election campaign, Hariri chose his words carefully when I asked him who ran Lebanon. The Syrian helped so much in uh, assuring the security and stability in the country. Uh, but in political basis, uh, there is a coordination and uh, there is a cooperation between the Syrian and the Lebanese and the Lebanese leaders and so on. They have influence beyond, beyond any doubt. At many rallies over 15 years, Hezbollah, the most powerful political and military force in Lebanon, has denied the accusation that its men carried out the assassination, perhaps on the orders of its allies, Syria and Iran. Its leader, Hassan Nasrallah, refused to allow the arrest of the four indicted Hezbollah men who otherwise would be in court to hear the verdict. To me, it's a closure. It's been a long 15, 15 years us as a family and the Lebanese. Rafik al-Hariri's eldest son believes the demand for reform in Lebanon cannot be stopped. I have never seen the Lebanese the way in unison the way they've been now. They're not gonna, they're not gonna pick a, a Swiss knife to fight each other. No, they are in unison. They want to get rid of this configuration once and for all. Enough is enough. Hariri's statue looks down on Beirut, the city he rebuilt. If Hezbollah's men are convicted of his assassination, then the blame attached to their organization and its backers in Syria and Iran will increase, and in turn, they'll push back. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News. OK, let's go to Mahma Yahya, director of the Carnegie Middle East Centre, who joins us live uh, from Beirut. Maha, thanks very much for joining us here on the programme. It's been a very difficult time for the Lebanese people in recent days and weeks, and no doubt they're watching this trial and verdict very closely. Hi, yes, absolutely. Uh, Everybody is uh, on edge to see what will happen. Uh, it's been almost 15 years uh, since the assassination of Prime Minister Rafiq al-Hariri, uh, along with 21 others, as well as uh, former Minister Basil Flaihan. Um, we're still living the repercussions of that moment today, uh, the ripple effects of that assassination. Uh, 
is still very much with us on so many different levels, both political uh, but also at the human level. We have already heard uh, from the judge, uh, and we played it here on the program a little earlier. Uh, he has said that there's no evidence that the Hezbollah leadership was directly involved in this assassination. How do you react to that? Well, based on the evidence they have uh, and what they found, which was, as, as we all heard, is primarily uh, evidence uh, related to the mobile networks, it's understandable that they couldn't make direct links without a reasonable doubt, as they would say. However, the key operatives involved in that have been, uh, at least where there has been evidence, including uh, Mustafa Badruddin, and were high level operatives in Hezbollah. So, um, it's it's hard to kind of square the two, if you like. To many people in Lebanon, uh, it would be very difficult for someone like Mustafa Badreddin to undertake an operation of this size, of this nature, where a thousand tons of explosives uh, blew up the country's prime minister. Uh, so it would be very hard for him to have undertaken uh, an, an, an operation this delicate and this politically sensitive without blessing the blessings of, of his higher ups, but also of the Syrian regime. Maha, Maha you have just said that uh, your country is facing the repercussions of what happened in 2005 to this day. Just give us a sense of uh, the situation in Lebanon at the time of the assassination. Well, this was the build up to, there was a build up of a, a broader opposition to Syria's presence in Lebanon. Um, in 1990, the civil war ended, there was a political settlement. Uh, this was the Pax Syriana at the time. As part of the political settlement, Syria was meant to leave its troops in Lebanon for a year or two until things stabilized. Fast forward uh, 2005, 15 years later, the troops were very much here and Syria was involved in every single aspect of Lebanese policy making. Resentment and anger against this had been growing, uh, had been uh, expanding. Uh, Prime Minister Hariri was on the cusp of joining a broad coalition that uh, was both Christian and Muslim in opposition to uh to the syrian regime but also to the uh, uh the, the parliamentary elections were coming up and the idea was to try and create this broad coalition so things could happen from within parliament and he was assassinated for it at the same time uh, a resolution had passed to get syria out um, this resolution was put squarely on the shoulders of prime minister hariri saying that he had incited it in overall, the mood was very anti-Syrian, uh, but also there was growing resentment of Hezbollah's role in the country. Um, the, the, the pretext for continued arms uh, had, to the minds of many Lebanese, ended because Israel had withdrawn from southern Lebanon. So there was no need for uh, a continued, uh, you know, for, for them to continually being armed. Yes. Um, so overall, the mood was very tense at the time and there was a broad broadening of this coalition. Maha, we'll have to leave it there, but thank you so much for joining us. That was Maha Yahya joining us there from Beirut.